it's time for the final Swiss round of day one here at the Bochum in Regional Championships here. I am so excited for this part of the tournament because this is really where you get players who have already advanced to tomorrow. They're already excited. They can kind of relax a little bit going into this next round. But then we've got a lot of players at X and 2 who are really battling out for the winning in matches. Exactly. This is the hype that everyone's kind of been waiting for at the moment. There's a few people who've already kind of got into that day two already. They've either gone undefeated or they've gone just with the one loss. But now is the last chance people can start to get in here. So this mm -hmm. is where it really kind of turns up the heat on many of these players who are now kind of X and two, which there tend to be quite a few of at this stage. And speaking of our X and two matches, we have got an amazing one for you. But let's first of all take a look at the standings so you can see how things are shaping up as we head into this final round. Exactly. So, um, we, we, as soon as we get those standings up, there we go. We, we, oh, here we go. <laughs> um, so, yeah, as you can see, eight and zero. Alex Soto with the Hard Trick Room team, if you remember from mm -hmm. uh, earlier on the stream, and Guillermo Castilla as well with his kind of bulky, uh, like Arcanine, uh, like um, and the Encore mm -hmm. and the Iron Bundle as well, which is really key as well. They're both 8-0, and which is really impressive too, both Spanish players. Mm -hmm. And then look at all these seven ones as well, all made it through as well. Like, I can't think, I don't think I can see anybody <laughs> here who I don't recognize. Uh, mm -hmm. So it really shows how consistent a lot of these players are. Yes, exactly. And of course, those seven and ones know that they're going to be safe going into the next round because day two, it all depends if you get X and two or top 32, whichever is the greater number, will be advancing towards tomorrow where they will battle out in a further five Swiss rounds to then try and get into that elusive top eight cut. And here we have the second row mm -hmm. of them as well. The final seven ones there. Um, Alex Gomez, obviously, we, mm -hmm. we've had for a while. Matt Maynard, he was undefeated for a while now. He's um, six and two, so he's kind of playing for the winning in as well. Um, Victor Medina, we've not had on yet. Um, mm -hmm. And Eric Rios down here, we've, we've had him on the stream too. So loads of six and twos at the moment. So um, who are you rooting for? Do let us know at the moment because mm -hmm. we're starting to really whittle it down now. And uh, those guesses are really going to count, especially if you get them right. Yep, use that hashtag play Pokemon to let us know what you think of all the Pokemon action coming down here in Bochum. I think the key thing as well is not only the players you're rooting for, but the Pokemon. And the one that's been the biggest surprise so far is the dominating tour call. It's been everywhere. It's been winning games, sets, matches. It's just been fantastic through and through. And I think it's definitely been the boldest meta call I've seen in a while, but definitely an accurate one. Exactly. And I, I was kind of thinking back to the, the when we first kind of got Series 2 in and the Paradox Pokemon came mm -hmm. in and about these abilities, the Protosynthesis and the yep. Quark Drive. And I thought, right, surely people are going to be finding any sort of way they can to kind of boost up these Paradox Pokemon. And, I, and that would be through the sun. But I think the initial kind of meta, we didn't really see a whole lot of that sun, but now it seems to be coming a little bit back. But now you can see who we are featuring for our round nine. We do have Jamie Boyt on the right hand side there and Andrea Olea on the left hand side. Both very no well notable players and running some pretty cool teams. Yes, Jamie Boyt, who often is behind the casting desk with us, has actually jumped back out into the fray to test his battling skills once again. A three time regional champion, and my favorite fun fact ever that Jamie was able to win a regional with a Cottony in his team. And I think that's one of the kind of credits that you have. You can see the Cottony actually on the desk as kind of a mascot for him, a good luck token, as it were, going forward, because he is one of the most creative team builders out there. Always looking at Pokemon and their niches and being innovative. And I think it's one of those things in open team sheets. Yes, you do get a lot of information, but I think back in the days when it was closed team lists, you had no idea what some of these Pokemon would do. It's not like you prep against things like a Cottony. You might kind of think, well, I know what a Whimsicott does. It does Cottony do the same kinds of things, but you just never know what tricks it might get up to. And sometimes that can give you the advantage, you know, being full of surprises. Adapting, however, into an open team sheet situation where Jamie won't necessarily have those surprising tricks, you know, things to pull out of your back pocket in game two, for example. This is where it's going to be a test of his Pokemon skill. I do remember going to a lot of locals where Jamie Boyd was also going to be there, and it was always like, oh, no, <laughs> what are we going to go face against this time? What am I going to lose to? Mm -hmm. What am I going to need to adapt to this time? Um, so, yeah, it's always good to see uh, Jamie Boyd, especially when I'm not playing against him. Yes, and of course, you know, on the opposing side as well, Andrea um, has, you know, a great kind of presence in the community as well. And one of the key things is that, you know, looking at the team, it's a little bit more standard. You know, we've got Pokemon, we've got Annihilate, King Gambit, Mousehold, Fluttermane, Iron Bundle, and Arcanine. And a lot of these Pokemon we've seen raise into dominance, you know, Fluttermane and Iron Bundle have been everywhere alongside Torkoal and Great Tusk and things like that. But the key ones for me is the synergy between that Mousehold and Annihilate. 
with Annihilate being able to have Rage Fist, which will get a 50 base power boost with every hit it takes. It makes the perfect partner for a Pokemon like Mousehold that can go for that beat up, particularly when you're out in the blocks and you've still got the four Pokemon remaining and you could hit that Annihilate four times. Suddenly you've got a base 200 power move that's going to hit really, really hard. And just briefly have a look at that Cottony on zoom in <laughs> there on the screen there. We've kind of got maybe arguably the equivalent of it on Jamie Boyd's team at the moment, the Brute Bonnet. Mm. Maybe not quite as cute looking. It's as close um, as we're getting. But <laughs> yeah, it's, it's as much as we can ask for in Series 2, I think. And it's not something we've seen a lot on stream, but it is that Paradox Pokemon with Protosynthesis and being that kind of Amoongus past version of itself with a lot of offensive power behind it this time in that Loaded Dice Bullet Seed set that Jamie Boyd mm -hmm. is running here. Yeah, really nice to see that. The loaded dice we've often seen on Pokemon like Baxcalibur, but it's interesting to see it on Brute Bonnet. And again, in the Battle of the Mushrooms, Amoongus is definitely reigning supreme. However, it's nice for Brute Bonnet, particularly as one of the newer Paradox Pokemon, to get a showcase here as well. It's just whether it, you think it's going to be able to come to this match. And just to remind ourselves of those accolades, Lou, you had a really good coverage of Jamie already. World's top 16 2019, mm -hmm. for those who did not remember, with uh, the Duskmane and Xerneas combination, <laughs> I believe. Uh, Malmo Regional Champion, Liverpool Regional Champion 2017, and World's top 16. So every single year he's got something there at the moment. Mm -hmm. So this could be his 2023. And Dre, on the other hand, is the London Open Champion 2023. Uh, which was pretty impressive because that was a uh, kind of a regional level tournament but had so many players come. Mm -hmm. um, and the Milan Special Event Top 4, which is an excellent performance too, and EUIC Top 32, so lots of really good experiences and accolades only very recently for Andreas. So this is mm -hmm. probably just a, another drop in the hat for and another kind of badge to mm. pin to himself after he goes um, potentially to day two. We'll have to find out. That's what I love about these winning ends. It really does count towards your, you know, lifeline in the competition. But let's dive a little deeper into Andrea's team here. You know, again, we've spoken a little bit about the Mousehold and Annihilate, but there's some key core Pokemon here as well. Arcanine providing a lot of support, not only with Intimidate to, you know, target down Pokemon like Roaring Moon, um, Dondozo, um, on Baxcalibur on Jamie's side of things, but also having that Will-O-Wisp, I think, is really nice. You can then weaken those physical attackers even further, and Snarl being there to help out against the special attackers, Pokemon like the Armourouge, for example. I'd like to talk about the Ar Iron Bundle a little bit, actually, because we often see players kind of toying up between Icy Wind and Encore, mm -hmm. and Iron Bundle's actually gone for both here. Obviously, the downside of that is you don't have Protect, so you can't kind of position around, um, get rid of Fake Outs, but um, Andreas kind of thought about this already, as you can see, and he's got the Ghost Terror type on there, so in case Fake Out was an option, you can kind of sort of do a Protect <laughs> and Terrestrialize into the Ghost type, which is really cool, because um, often players can uh, sometimes use the item to cover that in the Covert Cloak, mm -hmm. but he's so he's able to get the booster energy and potentially still not get faked out and have the utility to be able to go speed control and to Encore. Yes, and you can now see the six Pokemon that Jamie Boyd will be rocking in this final round. The Pokemon I really want to talk about is this Dondozo. We've seen many different variants of Dondozo ever since it was unleashed in Series 1. But the key thing here for me is that Electric Terror type. It's not something we've really seen before. Dondozo opting for things like Grass Terror or Flying Terror or Steel Terror. And it's one of those things you might think, well, in the Dondozo mirror, it's great. You can hit with an electric type Terra Blast, but why not go grass to avoid spores and things like that? But I think the key thing with the electric typing is you're then only really weak to ground, um, and you can then still do really well in that Dondozo mirror. Yeah, and those three types of moves that Dondozo has got uh, does not like to go into grass types at the moment. Mm. Um, but luckily for Jamie, he's got a few Pokemon that kind of deal with those grass types very well. The Flying Terror Roaring Moon that we've seen quite a lot of with Acrobatics certainly helps with that. Baxcalibur with Icicle Spear and the Life Orb can just get past Focus Sashes. And of course, Armor Rouge with that Armor Cannon is going to do huge chunks to other grass types as well. So he's kind of got that all nicely covered. And I really like the, the roundness to this team at the moment. Something that is a little bit lacking though is some speed control around there. Mm -hmm. I can't see any kind of tailwind. There's an icy wind on the Tatsugiri, but it's going to be in Dondozo's mouth a lot of the time, <laughs> um, which I don't blame it for. It's probably quite cozy. Yes, it definitely keeps it safe and sound, doesn't it? But you're right, Icy Wind kind of being one of the main, I think the only speed control option there that's really in play. Of course, you have to contend with things like Booster Energy, potentially on Roaring Moon if it wants to get a speed boost, but we'll have to see how Jamie has you know, trained it to see which stat is going to be activated from that. But then at the same time, you've got a lot of flexibility. You know, Just a Dondozo core by itself, if you get that Tatsugiri Commander boost, you're going to go up plus two speed. Yeah, so there's a lot of 
options that Jamie can really go for here, and it's probably not something that Andreas really kind of prepped for with arguably his kind of slightly more standard team with like the Ark and Ion bundle stuff. So he's going to have to work out if, say, if his normal Dondozer's answers mm. are going to be the, the right Dondozer answers for something that has Terra Electric, which is suddenly going to be pretty good into something like an Iron Bundle that normally can, likes to freeze dry it. Exactly. Well, we have got on the field that wonderful Iron Bundle. Its Quark Drive is going to be um, activated by its Boost Energy and get its speed even speedier than it was before, paired up with that King Gambit. On the opposing side, Armor Rouge and the Roaring Moon, however, for Jamie. It is, exactly. So um, it's a little bit of a slow lead um, from b both these players combined with that fast option. So um, Armour Rouge, n normally known for maybe carrying like a little bit of Trick Room, doesn't actually have it this time. Um, but I do kind of like its option at the moment, especially if we can tear it into the grass, because mm. it would be very risky to kind of go straight for a freeze dry into the Armour Rouge. That would be quite a hard read, and that means you'd be able to get a hugely powerful move off into whatever of these Pokemon are. And even then, even if you take the freeze dry, you're probably a little bit bulky to be able to take it, so the weakness policy activates, which would be very high. <laughs> but uh, actually, Arcline's coming in now, so uh, that was null and void. Yeah, it can't do a uh, you know, side intimidate, unfortunately, for that King Gambit. Instead, it's going to be able to throw it down against both of Jamie's Pokemon. The Roaring Moon is certainly going to suffer for it. Armor Rouge isn't going to worry too much, but Armor Rouge is now going to leave itself a little bit more exposed. It is going for that Grass Terror, so potentially in the next turn, if Arcanine is hanging around, it's going to be able to go for something like a Flare Blitz and deal a huge chunk of damage. Except, of course, it can't. There's, a, there's the Flash Fire ability. It's really nice synergy. We're going to see Arcanine take a good chunk of damage from the opposing Roaring Moon here, and Weak Armor is going to be activated. So, again, really nice synergy here, going for that Grass Terror, being able to, you know, take that damage reasonably well and now deal out a heavy hit with this um, armor cannon. Oh, yeah, man, if that armor cannon went into the King Gambit, that would have been a very, <laughs> um, like, completely destroying play for Jamie, for Andrea. But um, a good switch, however, into the mm. Arcanine, as Arcanine always is. So Kowtow Cleave ends up coming out instead into the Armour Rouge and just Ooh. actually gets the one shot there. Th probably thanks to that weak armor defense drop as well. So um, that's a really um, key KO and a bit of a, a wasted armor cannon from the Armour Rouge, unfortunately. Whereas mm. uh, maybe if there wasn't that Terra Grass, there was that um, weakness policy hit instead, it would have gone a little bit more damage and then gone down anyway. But uh, still, Jamie's still in a, an all right position. He's got a pretty fast Pokemon here at the moment, with, which still offers uh, Earthquake spread damage into both these super effective targets. Yeah, the armor is throwing me for a bit of a loop there. We often do see it running something like Flash Fire because then you can safely go into something like a Grass Terror and still not be affected by any you know, fire type moves. Where we see the weak armor here, it does actually give it, like I say, that difficult situation where it is going to have to take those drops. But someone who's going to hopefully help out here is little Tatsugiri. Yeah, and this is the Solvest Tatsugiri, actually. So we, we didn't have time to like talk about each individual Pokemon champions because <laughs> they're all kind of like, even if they're fairly standard, there's still something to talk about that's pretty different from them. So this is probably a more bulky Tatsugiri. So it can really kind of be that utility option in that icy wind mm. that allows the Roaring Moon to stay fast, which it still currently is at the moment. But it's a really good option at the moment because it doesn't care about the Intimidates that could come and cycle in and out and really threatens this Arcanine at the moment. Yep, Arcanine just going to go for a Protect. As you said, it is heavily threatened at this point, so it just doesn't want to take any damage. Roaring Moon's going to go for a crunch into the Protect of that Arcanine, so I think Jamie really realizing it is a threat. We need to remove this from the field. Tatsugiri is going to go for that Surf. It's going to connect on all three Pokemon on the field here, and as you can see, Arcanine wisely protecting. It does minimal damage to both Roaring Moon and King Gambit. Yeah, King Gambit takes it excellently well, especially having that Assault Vest. Mm. And interesting to see the two-hit KO on that Tatsuguri as well. So that's key information for Andrea in this game and in future games too. So uh, everything's not doing a whole lot of damage at the moment. Everything's kind of probably wanting to switch out to get into a better position, especially that Roaring Moon on Jamie's end. Yes, he's got the speed boost on with the booster energy, but it's probably not going to be doing a whole lot of damage now, especially now the Arcanine's in the back. It can come straight back in again. But... Iron Bundle is now the switch, and Tatsuguri is also switching out. Yep, Tatsuguri is going to leave the field. We're going to see Dondozo, so a switch of the fishes here. But that does, of course, mean that if you're Andrea, you know Tatsuguri is in the back later, potentially to go um, for the commander ability and fuse with the Dondozo. King Gamma going to go for the low kick, doesn't find its mark as the opposing Roaring Moon has protected here. Wise defensive play here from Jamie. 
It is. Um, however, Jimmy has already committed his terrestrialization. So um, mm. his Dondoso doesn't actually now have the option of, say, you, you can't like, switch in Tatsuguri and then go for that electric type Terra Blast anymore. So um, Iron Bundle's feeling a little bit better at the moment, assuming it can take the uh, plus two wave crash, for instance, um, or the earthquake even, which mm. it may or may not be able to. But Either way, Jamie is going to go for it this time. So it, we don't know what kind of training this Dondoza has had. It might have a loads of attack at the moment, and the, this Iron Bundle might not have a lot of like defense. So it, who knows? Dondoza is a very powerful Pokemon, mm -hmm. and uh, Iron Bundle is not known for being the bulkiest. So let's see. Earthquake is coming out. Yep, going to connect on both of Andrea's Pokemon here. Do only a little bit of damage to that opposing Iron Bundle, but not the same story can be said for King Gambit. That has been knocked out and will be returning to its Pokeball. The Iron Bundle here, able to go for that freeze dry. You can see the special defense really paying off with the Dondozo, but it's still dealing a significant chunk. I like the item choice on here, going for those leftovers, because due to then the defenses and special defenses you've got in place, those freeze dries aren't going to be as threatening. Yeah, so really not doing a huge amount of damage from the Dondozo, but also not taking loads either. Mm. So you can see probably Jamie's really made this Dondozo particularly bulky at the moment. So even something like a freeze dry is really not doing a whole lot, because a lot of players are kind of gearing their teams to be able to either get rid of the boost from a Dondozo or hit it really hard on the special side, uh, which is not so bulky. Um, but obviously, Jamie seems to have made his special defense really huge <laughs> at the moment because that it, it absolutely, for a super effective hit from an Iron Bundle, which we know has, is just so powerful and people like to use it, it's just really not doing a whole lot of damage. But uh, it's, it's in a nice position now, but obviously, Andreas kind of positioned in his Arcanine at the moment. Mm -hmm. And with the threat of Will O Wisp, that could really kind of hamper its plans at the moment because this Dondozo doesn't have anything like Rest, which a lot of them do carry. Yep, the Arcanine just going for a straight protect here. Dondozo is going to go for that wave crash into the protect of the Arcanine. So a really nice defensive play by Andrea here. Of course, Iron Bundle able to go for that icy wind, just trying to lower the speed a little bit more of that opposing Dondozo. The thing I like about this play is, yes, it's not going to deal a lot of damage, but we know that Iron Bundle is rocking Encore. So then if you're Jamie, you have to be really careful about what move choices you want to go for because that Iron Bundle has the position to lock you down into it. Particularly if that Arcanine wants to go for a will o -Wisp, it could be a really difficult time for Dondozo. Yeah, I think that's a great point. So going for Wave Crash is probably a little bit safer for Jamie. But yeah, thanks to that Icy Wind now, this Arcanine should probably outspeed this on Dondozo and should be able to get this Will-O-Wisp off. But it Ooh. looks like there is the miss. So that's pretty big. Um, but here's the Terror Blast from the non-Terrored um, Dondozo, which is doing not very much at all into this Iron Bundle, coming off just the normal move there. So um, Leftovers is going to heal up a little bit, but... Going into this next turn, Arcanine does get away with like not getting hit by the wave crash quite mm. luckily, but um, let's see if the will o -Wisp does come off again this time. Yep, just following up with these freeze drives, they are going to keep stacking up, and particularly if Dondozo... Oh, I was about to say, if Dondozo gets burned, it's going to counter out the leftovers, but you can't you know, burn a Pokémon if it's frozen. What you can do, though, is hit it with that Flare Blitz. Which should then probably thaw it as well, because that's what Flare Blitz does to mm -hmm. um, frozen Pokémon. So there it is. It's, it does thaw out, and Earthquake comes out instead. <laughs> Look at this animation. <laughs> um, into the Arcanine, it's, it's got its... Pretty boosters at the moment, and it does get the double KO and the critical hit into the Iron Bundle too, which I think did matter based on some earthquake damage before. I feel like poor Dondozo didn't know what was <laughs> happening in that turn. You know, getting frozen, but then getting thawed out by your opponent. And, you know, it seems a little bit counterintuitive, but it certainly paid off here for Jamie. You know, being able to unthaw and go for that earthquake allows you to get that solid double KO. Andrea obviously can now bring in this Fluttermane from the back, but it is his last remaining Pokémon, and Jamie's sitting pretty with three Pokémon as the advantage. Yeah, and this is not a Focus Sash Fluttermane, unfortunately, so it's, it's going to probably go down to just one Wave Crash at this point. Unless um, this Fluttermane can deal the, enough damage to be able to get the knockout here. It's a mm. pretty powerful Pokémon, it's got the choice specs, and it should be faster thanks to the Icy Wind Drop. So, um, yeah, and just to be sure, Andrea is going for that terrestrialization into the fairy type. So mm. I do imagine we're going to see some sort of fairy move, probably the Moonblast being locked into here. I mean, this is actually really interesting, as it is the faster it can go for this Moonblast, get the KO on Dondozo, and then Jamie's last two remaining Pokémon are that Roaring Moon and the Tatsugiri. Tatsugiri doesn't want to take a Moonblast either. It's going to be knocked out easily by one of those. I think, you know, even if... Tatsugiri is running that Salt Vest. It's already taken a huge chunk of damage, and Roaring Moon is four times weak to Fairy Move. So, you know, if Fluttermane's able to survive here, it's going to be able to get two clean KOs. Yeah, and I'd be I'm surprised that it's not locked into Dazzling Gleam here based on the last mm. two Pokémon, because I would have expected both of them to actually be able to just go completely down to it. But 
Um, I maybe he was expecting a, a, a like a double attack from Jamie here actually, but he actually ends up protecting one. So one actually just goes down and gives and. Andrea, a complete opening to be able to just take this game. That's the thing, Andrea calls that protect perfectly, going, I'm going to ignore the Roaring Moon because I can only use Moonblast Time Choice Specs locked in. I'm going to go for that little Tatsugiri instead, and it was certainly the right call here. I guess knowing it's Assault Vest means it can't protect. So, you know, if you're going to maybe think Jamie's going to protect on that Roaring Moon, let's just go for the safe option. But it's, I think it's interesting as well that Jamie did go for the protect in that turn, possibly, you know, taking a look at Roaring Moon. That, at the end of the day, there isn't too much it could go for. You don't want to necessarily go for Earthquake and do damage to your Tatsugiri. Acrobatics isn't going to get the KO. Crunch isn't going to get the KO. It's Fairy type. But what will get the KO is a single target Moonblast there. Yeah, I could, so g good game to Andrea there. The flutter main sweep at the end there was mm. really crucial. And I think a big part of that was due to the re early trastalization that Jamie made. It meant that there was no possible to kind of defensive trastalization that could be made in the late game, mm. which Tatsuguri could have become the water type to take it better on. Leroy Moon could have become the flying type, both of which would have really helped in that end game. But instead he goes for the grass type terror in the armories, which didn't end up counting for much at all. So, um, and, and, and then we also had the Dondoza, which probably also wanted to tear into the Electric to deal with the unbundle a little bit quicker. I ended up getting the Earthquake, uh, pretty good damage on it anyway, but um, I feel like if Jamie can better manage his terrestrialization, maybe try and save it for a little bit later on in the game, he might be in more of a shot for this game too. Yes, and I mean, you know, the Dondozo pairing is great, but I just feel like it didn't really give Jamie any advantage. If anything, it kind of slowed down his momentum because you're stuck in with that Dondozo. You're always going to have the one versus two Pokemon disadvantage in that case. And Andrea was just able to kind of pivot Pokemon in to deal with it really well. You've got the Iron Bundle that isn't going to take too much damage from anything that the opposing Dondozo, particularly out of Terra, isn't going to be able to deal to it. And then you could just go for those freeze drives. And although they were significantly kind of duped down because of the special defense boosts that the opposing Dondozo had, it still hit heavily enough. And then you've got Arcanine switching in some Intimidates, threatening with the Will-O-Wisp. And I think that was great piloting by Andrea to have that ball position to threaten the Dondozo. Something I'd like to see from Jamie maybe kind of switch up here is potentially the Backscalibur. Um, it's mm. something that will um, certainly be able to dish a lot of damage out to the Fluttermane, assuming you tear her out of the Dragon type, or just kind of get it into a position where you're able to get that move off, maybe after an Icy Wind from the Tatsugiri. Because mm -hmm. at that point, especially a Glaive Rush will just completely take it down, possibly even the Icicle Spear as well if you get enough hits with the Life Orb. It also offers a lot of damage into the... Um, Iron Bundle, as mm -hmm. uh, I think we know Glaive Rush will just kind of one-shot that too. So that, well being well positioned, I think could really um, put Jamie in a really nice position. And combined with, it, say, the Brute Bonnet that can put the things to, to sleep, Batscalibur can then freely target the things he wants. So I think there's an opportunity for him to really switch things up completely here, and maybe bring some of the Pokemon that uh, Andrea has not yet faced. Yeah, the King Gambit's a difficult one for Jamie as well. I mean, we saw the Armor Rouge go for that Armor Cannon, but it just didn't go into that King Gambit slot, and I think it would have been better for Jamie to remove King Gambit earlier from the game. It's got things like that Low Kick that are going to hit hard against things like the Roaring Moon. Obviously, Dondozo, very, very heavy Pokemon, doesn't want to take a Low Kick either. And then just it can deal really decent damage with things like Houghton Cleave. Yeah, it's it's but been such a strong Pokemon of King Gambit has like it's compared to like pre-evolution Bisharp, which is mm. quite frail often, carrying the Focus Sash um, and being quite weak to a fair few types and that double weakness to fighting. Um, King Gambit's completely different, so bulky, really hard to take down, and still has a, so much firepower going behind it. But we do have a switch up here, Lou. Yes, you said you wanted to see the Backscalibur, and Jamie has kindly obliged. Backscalibur's here paired up with the Brute Bonnet, and on Andrea's side, it's going to be the Iron Bundle once again paired up with the Arcanine that's able to get a good Intimidate down. Yeah, so here we go. So there's no Rage Powder um, on mm -hmm. this Brute Bonnet, so it's not... Uh, exactly in Moongus yet, but then <laughs> you'd be running in Moongus. So this Brute Bonnet instead has that offensive capabilities this time. And with that loaded dice as well, it's going to get at least four hits on that Bullet Seed, which is a, a line item I think Jamie really likes to run a lot of the time. But Spore is looking decent into both of these Pokemon. Arcline, of course, can tear into the Grass, which can cover a lot of these things. But then you're weak to the Icicle Spear mm. on Max Galibur. But again, it'd be quite the call for Jamie to go to the Ice move into the Arcanine. Yeah, decisions, decisions. Brute Bonnet, however, is just going to go straight for a Protector. Nice adjustment by Andrea here, saving the Iron Bundle for later. As Arcanine goes for the will o -Wisp, but it goes into the Protector Brute Bonnet, so it's not going to be able to deal big damage with something like the Bullet Seed here. Backscalibur's then free to go for the Glaive Rush, but it goes into the Flutter Main, that being a Fairy type, isn't going to be affected by any Dragon type moves. Great switch there by Andrea, and a good Protect by Jamie, so a little bit of a uh, non-void turn at mm -hmm. the moment. But going into turn two, 
obviously the flutter main is looking pretty nice here and it's probably going to force jamie to either translize or switch out again um to be able to position himself so the the driver's seat is uh, very much Andreas right now, and obviously the Arcanine doesn't want to target anything into the back scale by thanks to that thermal exchange. Will O'Wisp isn't going to affect it. Flare Blitz will just increase its power even more. So I feel like, um, but using the offense that Jamie still has, I think is key for him. So I wouldn't be surprised mm -hmm. if we see a trastalization from the back scale. Yeah, we're going to see the Flutter main go first here. Of course, we know it is that Fairy Terror type. So it's able to apply a lot of pressure with something like a Dazzling Gleam or that Moonblast that we saw, you know, get the victory for Andrea in that game one. We're just going to see the Dazzling Gleam this time. However, obviously, the Dark Typing is now on that opposing Brute Bonnet here. And it all oh, does so much damage. Gets the knockout on by Excalibur. It's down and out on Brute Bonnet, barely hanging on. The Arcanine, however, in a great position to follow up with the Flare Blitz. There's going to be a double KO for Andrea. Oh my goodness, I, that is an absolutely, like, offensively powerful <laughs> turn from Andrea there. I think maybe Jamie was kind of hoping that Andrea would kind of overextend a bit. Maybe, like, Jamie kind of predicting him uh, to go from, like, maybe a single target move or kind of maybe, like, Moonblast into the Backscalibur instead mm. or double into it so he'd get one Pokemon off and not the other. But it was the Dazzling Gleam this time that Andrea went for, really switching up from that game on where he kind of locked into the Moonblast instead. So uh, a huge turn for Andrea, really picking it up for, from a 4-2 four, um, four to a 4-2 now. Yeah, absolutely brutal turn there. You know, devastating for Jamie, but when there is a Dondozo, there is a way. Also, when you've got the Tatsugiri in play and has been able to go for that commander, the issue is the utility that Andrea has got. You've got the Arcanine, you could switch it out, bring it back in, intimidate, you can always go for that cheeky will o as well. And then it really is just a chipping away game for Andrea here. We know the Iron Bundle's in the back as well. It can go for those freeze drives that we saw utilized very well in game one. And you can also make some good adjustments as well um, from you know the Pokemon lurking in the back, that King Gambit can maybe kind of clean up a little bit more towards the end. So yeah, I like the Arcanine switching out here even, so you can always switch it back in, mm -hmm. lower the attack of this Dondozo because it's not going up anymore. Even though that is the curly form category, there is no order up on this uh, fish. So but Way Crash goes into what was the Arcanine slot and does a hefty chunk to that King Gambit here. So that's a decent amount of damage that's come out. Um, and we know how much Dondozo can take from the freeze dry of this, mm -hmm. so which doesn't do a lot of damage. And with the leftovers there, it's probably going to be at least a five or six hits KO at the moment with this uh, in bundle. Mm -hmm. So if, if Jamie Boy can kind of deal with the partner Pokemon that may, might be able to do a bit more damage, then he may be able to eke something out here. Maybe some crits too. Yes, and here's the Arcanine once again coming in just to intimidate that Dondozo a little bit further. I like the way Andreas preserved the Flutter Main in the back later, because also you still have to deal with Tatsugiri if Dondozo gets KO'd, and that Moonblast is going to pack a punch, particularly as it is going to be speedier. You do still have to contend with, obviously, the Assault Vest on that Tatsugiri, but it is in its terror form, so it may still be able to get the KO. But this is the thing Jamie really wanted to bring to this team. We have that electric terror-type Dondozo. Yep, Dondozo has a pretty bright idea right now, and it is the electric type Terror Blast. Going into the Arcanine, so maybe wishing it was a Wave Crash right now, but it is a two-hit KO. Um, oh, not with the Citrus not Berry, quite. however. Yeah, the Berry kind of putting a spanner in the works there. I think one of the issues as well with Wave Crash is obviously you take a little bit of recoil, and this Dondozo needs to hold on to every HP point it can. You can see it taking a little bit more chip from that King Gambit, but really to no avail, the Leftovers Recovery is going to be able to regain that. My issue is that Arcanine, because if it wants to go for something like that Willow so that's going to really, really kind of neuter the pressure that Dondozo has. Yeah, Dondozo is still at like plus two speed, I believe. So our client, I think, is definitely going to want to switch out yet again or mm -hmm. protect at, the, at this moment because you definitely want to keep it around to either put it in more or get off, eventually get off that Will O Wisp. So, yeah, I'm not too much surprised to hear the Arcanine protect here, but let's see if Jamie Boy has called this. Oh, big damage with a critical hit. Dondozo takes a huge chunk of damage. It's going for that Terror Blast into the protect again. So it doesn't even manage to KO King Gambit for its troubles. Yeah, a big protect. Another great play by Andrea there to just really preserve the resources he's got. He's 4-2 up, but he's definitely not down and out, and he definitely knows that too. So he's making really good calls and not just kind of playing it too safe and just double attacking with everything and gaming, giving Jamie a kind of a, an out at the moment. So um, I really like the way he's been playing this. And here comes another sucker punch. Yeah, it doesn't get the crit this time, but still chipping away at that Dondozo. It is going to go for the Earthquake. This is nice to be able to hit both Pokemon that are going to deal big damage to it. King Gambit goes down. Arcanine just hangs on. 
<laughs> really closely hangs on there. Is it going to go for another Willowis? No, it's the Flare Blitz this time, mm -hmm. which is normal effective, and it's do it doing half of what it had left. And um, it takes a little bit of recall. Does Arcline go down mm -hmm. yet? It does. Uh, leftovers recovery is going to heal up this Dondos a little bit more. It is still at plus two speed, but I don't think it's enough to outspeed a Fluttermane and an Iron Bundle. That's the thing, and even if, you know, it is that... Iron Bundle is running that Icy Wind, so it can always kind of stop that in its tracks. The one thing you've got to watch out for, though, of course, Fluttermane is choice specs. It's not going to be able to protect here. But I think if it safely locks into something like the Moonblast here and gets rid of that Dondozo, Tatsugiri comes out, and even if it's going to be able to survive due to its Assault Vest, a Moonblast from the Fluttermane, you've got the Iron Bundle that can go for a freeze dry first of all and just, you know, destroy Tatsugiri. Yeah, Andrea has one option, one option only here. Freeze drive with your fast try and bundle, get the KO, and then ferry move to destroy the Tatsuguri mm -hmm. in the back. But the Tatsuguri is a salt vest. It could be bulky enough to potentially live. But yeah, interestingly, the uh, Fluttermane is actually faster mm -hmm. than the um, Iron Bundle here, possibly due to the booster energy, not needing it to be kind of uh, maximum speed at the moment. So the Freeze Dry comes, comes out instead. Can a Salt Vest Tatsuguri live this? Oh. It does. Does it have an option to kind of go for a move here? It probably doesn't, as it's probably already slower going yeah. after this turn. So, yeah. yeah, here is the finishing Moonblast from this Fluttermane. It's curtains for Jamie, but, you know, huge congratulations to Andrea keeping that X2 record and will be advancing to day two of the competition. Amazing play here. Amazing play. Congrats to Andrea and from Switzerland too as well um, for anyone watching at home. Uh, commiserations to Jamie Boyt. Um, he's got a, a good few accolades as well and Bokum is just not his time yet, but I'm sure we'll see him at more events as well. He might be running back to the caster desk after that one, though. You just never know. But again, the one thing I really liked to see was the creativity in Jamie's team bringing a John Dozo, not in a style that we haven't really seen before. I just think the difficulty was actually working around a choice specs flutter main. We've seen it, you know, run things like the like the booster energy that you've talked about, also running focus sash quite a lot at the minute. Choice specs is probably the rarer one. And just being able to have to compensate for that extra damage that the choice specs give you, you know, it gives you a 50% boost. And then if you terrify, um, terrify Fairy, then that's another 50% boost. Those moon blasts are going to hit really hard, and just unfortunately, there were too many weaknesses on Jamie's side. Brute Bonnet, Roaring Moon having those dark types as well. Um, you know, Roaring Moon also having the dragon typing, and Baxcalibur having the dragon typing just makes it really difficult for Jamie to deal with fairy type Pokemon in general. I think it did, it's true. And there was no Pokemon that kind of really resisted it off the back mm. immediately. They had to terrestrialize uh, either into uh, like a, a steel or a kind of a dark type, which mm -hmm. there wasn't really a lot of at the moment. So yeah, and even if you tear away from a weakness into something that's just normal effective, Fluttermane is just so powerful with the mm -hmm. specs and the terror, it will probably just um, one-shot a lot of your Pokemon regardless. That's the thing, we often see, you know, Terra Steel or Terra Fire in order to compensate for the f amount of fairy Pokemon out there. Jamie isn't running either of those Terras on any of his Pokemon. You know, there's a lot of water in there, a lot of flying, obviously we've got grass, electric, but not fire or steel, which are kind of the ones you need defensively when you're dealing with fairy type Pokemon, particularly if you have a weakness for it. But one thing's for certain, though, Andrea has done very well to kind mm -hmm. of get to day two at the moment with a very kind of like solid team especially with the King Gambit Mousehold Ape as well is kind of getting through a bit too which is kind of cool to see mm -hmm. after it's a lot of its success in Series 1 it's still kind of pittering on at the moment too and it's, again with that Mousehold which we've seen a lot of mostly that kind of support option mm -hmm. with the follow me the beat up and stuff maybe a super fang for the damage not a lot of population bomb apart from Alexandra's uh, last <laughs> uh, round which you managed to kind of uh, keep at bay yeah, it was nice to see that, actually. Again, the variety coming out of Mousehold. Of course, it's amazing for Andrea to be able to advance into the next day of competition. Jamie, I believe, still will get some championship points, though, and that's all the kinds of things that you need in order to try and make that road to Yokohama at the World Championships later in August. And that really is, you know, what our players are here for. You want to be able to win, but you also want to try and put yourself against the best at the World Championships later in the year. Exactly. So hopefully we'll be getting uh, Andrea pretty soon for an interview at the end of this round nine, at the end of day one of Bochum Regional Championships. So um, it'll be interesting to hear, hopefully, a little bit about the team building and a little mm -hmm. bit about the um, the process behind, especially the Iron Bundle with that kind of um, trasselization into the Ghost mm -hmm. and the Encore and the Freeze Dry and the Icy Wind all in one. I think one thing that stands out for me as well is we've seen Fluttermane and Iron Bundle everywhere. But when we look at the ones that actually make it through to day two and then further on into that top cut of top eight, what is it about those ones that are so special? And that's kind of, I think, one of the things I particularly want to get out of this weekend is it's very easy to look at a Pokemon and go, hey, it's amazing, it wins all these things, it's in all the top cuts. But what is it actually about this set or possibly the way that it's piloted by a player that makes it actually get those wins compared to one that isn't necessarily doing so well? 
Yeah, ex exactly right. And uh, what's something I want to try and like get a grasp of, especially over the stream and uh, especially to day two when we go in tomorrow, how much these Pokemon are trained differently from each other? Because especially the Iron Bundle and the Futtermane, they want to use a lot of speed mm -hmm. and a lot of special attack. And how many of those have actually kind of been maybe speed tying a little bit That's true. throughout, which we haven't really kind of um, got to see a lot of because they haven't been on the field at the same time or have they mm -hmm. been brought to each other yet. But that is something that could end up becoming quite commonly seen to the later stages of day two potentially. Yeah, and we've seen a lot of Torkoal as well. It's definitely a Pokemon we have to highlight. Not one I was expecting, but I'm sure we'll get more Torkoal action in day two as well. I think speed control has been a key thing. You know, we get to see the Icy Wind on Iron Bundle from time to time, but some players have dropped that in the favor of Encore. So we have seen a lot of kind of evolution in terms of the way that these Pokemon are kind of fitting into the metagame. We haven't seen as much Tailwind as, as I normally would see, but we've seen a lot more Trick Room, and I think that's definitely trying to carve its mark out in Series 2. It has. Speed Control has kind of taken a little bit more of a back seat in this series too. I think maybe just because the Paradox Pokemon themselves are just so powerful. Mm -hmm. Like it doesn't, it doesn't necessarily matter how, how speedy they've been because a lot of them are quite bulky. So you can just put them in the right position and they do what you want. Mm -hmm. So it's just a matter of having your Speed Control because your, other, your opponent might have Speed Control. So yeah, for instance, great task in a certain position, but it, but it can live the freeze dry from Mind Bundle. Mm -hmm. It often wants the Focus Dash to lift the Hydro Pump anyway. So either way, it's going to be living these attacks. So, um, so it's interesting that Alex Soto, for instance, who we know is 8-0 mm -hmm. going into the last round, is running a hard trick room and seeing how well he's done because of that. So maybe people need to start kind of veering back to kind of giving trick room a bit of respect. <laughs> Oh, I love to see the fact this Series 1 team has done so well, you know, undefeated going into the final round. And I think it's one of those interesting things as well that you can't always count out teams just because you're in the new series and there's new Pokemon to play around with. It doesn't necessarily mean these old teams are outdated. It really does come down to the tweaks that you make to adjust for the current metagame and then how you pilot them. One thing I do think that has been pretty outrageous this weekend so far is we haven't seen Murkrow or the Gastrodon in action. Yeah. It's what like someone's like? playing a mean joke on us. <laughs> exactly. Although, if Trick Room really picks up, then I think Gastrodon mm -hmm. might be a very cool option. Storm Drain away all those issues that you might have. And Murkrow, obviously, people have other answers for Dondozo at the moment, which is fair enough. Mm -hmm. um, but, but it, it has was the, the original. It was the original, mm -hmm. exactly. Uh, I'm, I'm happy for Murkrow to retire at the moment. <laughs> it's all right. I don't mind it. It's but done its thing, and it has no regrets for sure. Yeah. But anyway, we are now ready <laughs> for the interview with our round nine winner, Andrea Olea. We're going to hand them right over. See you in a sec. And a welcome, everybody. We are here with your round nine winner, Andrea Olea. Of course, Hi. hello, Andrea. What a match as well to be able to just yeah. go ahead and show off some real stellar uh, play styles and strategies going into uh, the matchup versus our very own Mr. Jamie Boyd. Oh yeah, it was amazing to play against Boyd. He's one of my favorite players, so I was really excited. <laughs> I mean, it was very, very good as well. Like going to see the actual matchup between you two, uh, there were some initial speculations of, hmm, okay, is there a way to sort of break down the very interesting uh, couple of set variations from Jamie's side? And we saw that there was a big reliance, which made a lot of sense on that flutter main. Yeah, so the matchup was a bit tricky because of the also electric terra blast against Bundle and the quite unique armor rouge. So. Yes. I had to think a lot about what to bring. Like normally, I wouldn't bring maybe King Gambit against Don Dozo, but I had to bring it. So I had to adjust and also put a lot of faith on Iron Bundle and Flutterman mainly. And I had to make a lot of reads as well because uh, it wasn't easy at all. <laughs> it was very read heavy as well. I mean, who would expect a earthquake from turn one? I think to Terra type into Armor Rouge, so you could proc. Uh, I, I believe. Um, I'm forgetting the name, Weak Armor, Weak Armor, yes. And uh, there was the crucial moment where we were thinking, oh, is he going to be targeting into your King Gambit at that time? And um, please talk us through that situation there. Do you think that was very read-based? Were you expecting that sort of play? Sure, so uh, it was very read-based because really a lot of things could have happened. He could have turned to activate, uh, to not activate weakness policy or activate it. So like, there were a lot of options from both sides. I ended up thinking it might try and prioritize eliminating uh, Iron Bundle given it was the main annoying thing for his Dondozo. 
and I was right on that. And also, he might have been scared of going for Armor Cannon on King Gambit, given the Terra Water. So I had to kind of make a bet and try to adjust and preserve the Iron Bundle for later. And I preferred going for the Koto Cleave, so I could have had a clean KO without actually going for Sucker Punch, which could have been worse in case of Terra Grass. And I think the sort of approach that you had to it made a lot of sense. Like you said, uh, you're just able to sort of limit and control as much as you can uh, Jamie's Pokemon going into it. We saw you did stellarly well in game one. Uh, going into game two, there were a couple of key KOs you were able to pick up on. We did see the electric uh, terror type on Dozo, I believe. Um, but you were able to just lead with a bit more confidence when it comes to the certain expectations. I think Jamie had... What is it? Four Pokemon that were weak to fairy types, or potentially yes, they could be. Batman was extremely good there because of his many fairy weaknesses. Though I also had to pay attention because of his many priorities and offensive threats. So, for example, game two when he led that way, I kind of expected him to possibly change lead and maybe bring Brute Bonnet. I didn't expect the the what's this called? The Baxcalibur. And so I had to kind of adjust. I, I managed to make a good read, turn one, where it protect the the band, the, the brute bonnet from the freeze dry or will o wisp or whatever. And as he tried to pray, to keep his stereotype for the Dondozo, which was uh, essential against the bundle. So I read the glaive rush into bundle and decided to bring in the flatterman, and then I turned out to be safe from my sharp plus sucker punch and stuff like that. So that helped a lot. But again, it was very risky. Could have gone for spore and stuff like that. So his team is actually amazing, I think, because it's really unexpected and he forced me to make lots of read. I couldn't just go with my safe plans and stuff like that. So it was one of those sets then, even though, of course, the result was 2-0, and a very, very strong result for your win and in match, of course, being able to uh, clinch your position into day two of the Swiss rounds. Um, like you said, it, it was a bit closer from how you felt because there was a lot of different layers that you needed to take into consideration. But honestly, you did it ecstatically well. You did a really good job about it, and it was such a pleasure to be able to actually see the set between the both of them. <laughs> oh, it's just the truth, Andrea, don't worry. I was going to ask you, so uh, team building wise, uh, how did you go going into this event? What were your sort of um, main focus points that you were thinking you wanted to try to prep against? So about the team, I actually started building it a month ago or something like that before Orlando even. And I was working on uh, some different builds of Mausel and Nilep and then is, I ended up with this. I, regarding the matchups, I definitely had to worry about Armor Rouge, uh, Don Dozo and the normal stuff, but in the end I think there are like too many offensive threats uh, or that need to be treated completely different, that, that uh, in the end somehow you will end up sacrificing one matchup more than others, so yeah. So I also tried to look what I ended up winning so, and what would be weak against that and maybe that would be less used and stuff like that, but you know. Uh, it it kind of worked out for today, so... <laughs> I mean, you were able to bring back the Annihilate mouse hold combination. You know, we saw it started dropping in usage stats in uh, relation to the actual combination itself. You know, we saw it do incredibly well in the latter half of Series 1 with the beat-up strategy, going into Rage Fist, Friend Guard, Leftovers. It made a lot of sense. Did it really put in the work for you going into this event today? Yeah, it won me some matches of its own, but it, it's not really the main strategy of the team. So it, even Anilip works alone, Mausel works alone. So I am happy with the team in the end. I mean, it's definitely got you day two. <laughs> I would hope that it made you happy. But um, I did want to say, do you have, uh, for example, any shout outs that you would like to make going into this? Any friends that may have uh, contributed to assisting you in preparation? Yes, I'd like to shout out for, to my friend Giovanni Polarbear, who helped me prep a lot, as well as uh, uh, Chichot, uh, who is uh, another great friend of mine, who helped me testing, uh, Azuya and all my other friends, uh, who are too long to mention. <laughs> get the list out, get the book, we'll start. <laughs>
No, but that's fine. That is honestly great to see. We wish you from the bottom of our hearts all of the luck going into tomorrow. Huge congratulations. Winning in on stream is definitely no small feat at all. It oh, most definitely feels good. But of course, what we will be doing, ladies and gents, we're not going to be ending this uh, show just yet. We will be hopping back to the cast desk in order to go ahead and check out what the final standings are and who has made it into day two of the Swiss. This has been Andrea, Olia, as well as Costa, bidding you good night, take care, and we'll catch you tomorrow. Thank you, Costa, for providing the last interview of an amazing day one here in Bochum. As he said, we will be bringing you the final standings of the players who will be advancing into day two, but the round has not quite finished yet. So we're going to kick it to a very short break, but do not go anywhere because as soon as we're back, we'll be able to reveal who has made it through into day two.